Blood River into the hands of just a single man. This is a Maxim gun. What made this weapon such a great weapon, as opposed to the old single-shot weapons that had been used in years before, was this gun could fire continuously for up to 500 rounds a minute. It had the equivalent firepower of probably 100 men in a company with single-shot weapons. As they drove further into Africa, Europeans encountered new tribes, some just as hostile to invasion as the Zulus had been. But for peoples like the Matabili, there was simply no answer to the world's first fully automatic weapon. The Matabili conflict of October 1893 lasted a matter of hours. settlers mowed down those Matabili warriors until there were only a few of them left. It was a real case of ancient technology up against the latest and greatest as far as European inventions were concerned. It seems like the birth of a new age. Europeans carving a path into the interior of Africa. Conquering tribe after tribe. Settling where they pleased. Guns, germs, and steel triumphant. Except now, those settlers would find themselves facing an entirely new enemy one that had once been their greatest ally, geography. As they moved north, settlers cleared land for farms, confident they could build a prosperous life in Africa. But with little warning, things began to go awry. The land became impossible to plow. Oh, come on. Oh. Their crops refused to grow. Come on. Their shoes fell apart oh. in the mud. Oh. That was only the start. Come on, man! The second big problem that Europeans encountered was their animals died. Their horses and oxen had been a big part of the European advantage elsewhere in the world. Oxen as draft animals and horses as their military animals. But here, the animals were dying. For thousands of years, these domesticated animals and crops had sustained European civilization. Without them, there would have been no guns, germs, and steel. No history of conquest and colonization. And now, the settlers themselves began to fall ill with terrible fevers. While all around them, they could see native Africans farming, herding cattle. Healthy and alive. How was this possible? What were the secrets of this strange new land? The ideas behind guns, germs, and steel all spring from an understanding of geography. 
and geography explains why Europeans were now failing. European crops had grown well in the Cape because the Cape was a mirror of the European world, lying on a similar latitude. But as the settlers progressed into the African interior, they'd been moving north, closer and closer to the equator. At about 23 degrees south, near the river Limpopo, they passed a major geographical boundary known as the Tropic of Capricorn. They were leaving behind their familiar European climate and entering a totally different world. They had entered the tropics. Compared to the European or temperate zones, the tropics operate by entirely different rules. Instead of the four seasons of Europe, North America, and the Cape, here there are just two the dry season, and the rainy. Wheat and barley, the crops that had sustained European civilization for centuries, had not evolved to survive in this tropical climate. Yet the native Africans, the Zulus, the Matabili, all the tribes that the settlers had encountered depended on agriculture just as much as the Europeans. How were they succeeding as the Europeans failed? Even today, the continent of Africa is composed of thousands of different tribal groupings. Each is subtly distinct from the next in custom and language. Such diversity means that most Africans have to master more than one language, and they acquire those skills at a very young age. I would like to find out how many languages you speak. Who here speaks, knows how to speak Bemba? Aha! Does anybody else know how to understand or speak Lozi? You speak Lozi? Yes. Do you also speak Demba? Yes. Is there another language that you speak also? Lovak. Lovak. That's four languages. That's good. Most Americans speak only one language. After a little exposure to these different languages, you begin to realize one thing. They all sound remarkably similar. I'm fascinated with languages, and wherever I've been going, I'm asking Africans, what's your language, and tell me some words in your language. So here's what I found out for the word for sun. In the Nyanja language, sun is Zuba. In the Bemba language, it's Aka Zuba. In Chiwa, it's Duzuba. And in the Sengu language, it's Zuba again. Or the word for water. In the Nyanja language, it's Manzi. And in Bemba, it's Amenshi. And in Chiwa, it's Manzi, similar to each other again. What do these linguistic similarities tell us? That there is a common root for most of the modern languages of tropical Africa a single ancestral language spoken by a single group of people from which the many languages of today have descended. Linguistic analysis has isolated a family of languages known as Bantu, which originated in tropical West Africa. About 5,000 years ago, the early Bantu speakers began to spread into new lands, bringing their crops, their animals, and their language with them. And over centuries, Bantu culture evolved, diversifying into hundreds of tribes, expanding across the tropical region of Africa. <laughs> 